There are thousands of possible chords you could play on guitar, but the good news is that it only takes seven to play 90% of the songs that you likely want to play. And the great news is that those chords are the foundational chords from which all other chords are built. In this video, I'm gonna show you what those chords are, how to play them with proper technique, and we're gonna to touch on the theory behind how to build those chords. If you're ready to take the first step into understanding harmony as a guitar player, let's get into it. Fair warning before we get started. Nothing in this video is gonna be dumbed down. I'm not gonna show you any partial chords. There's not gonna be any cute hacks. I'm not gonna make any compromises to make this easier at the expense of proper technique. The truth is, playing chords is hard at first, but if you're motivated to push yourself in order to build a strong foundation, then I can teach you how to master these chords. And just so you know, I didn't choose these seven chords randomly either. Like I mentioned earlier, these are the chords upon which all other chords are built, and they're also the most commonly used chords. You can try to fight it, but you can't advance on guitar without these. When I was first learning to read, it was hard, so I fought it. I promised my mom that I'd be able to navigate life without reading. I now look back on that as the insane ramblings of an illiterate five-year-old. Let me be your guitar mom here and assure you that you're not gonna be able to progress without these chords. If you've been following along with my guitar roadmap, right now we're in level one and we're covering open chords. They're called open chords because they involve open strings. This is in contrast to the other big category of chords that we play on guitar, which are called bar chords. Those are in level three, so don't worry about those right now. Now let me show you what the chords are and how to play them. Okay, so the first chord we're gonna learn is called E minor. And just to remind everybody, our fingers are numbered one, two, three, and four, and the strings are named E, A, D, G, B, E. To play E minor is really simple. You take your second finger and put it on the second fret of the A string. And you take your third finger and put it on the second fret of the D string. And then you just strum all six strings. Our next chord is E major, which is easy if you know E minor, because you just do the same thing. Second finger on the second fret of the A, third finger on the second fret of the D, you take your free first finger here and put it on the first fret of the G string. Here we go. Now that's an E chord or an E major chord. E major sounds happy, where E minor sounds sad. I want to jump in here and make a quick note. You might have noticed there that I referred to the same chord as both E and E major. Whereas with the first chord, I only ever called it E minor. There is a reason for this, and it has to do with a musical concept called tonality. When we refer to a chord or a scale, sometimes we say this is like E minor or E major. Minor or major are what we call tonalities. If you go on, you might encounter different tonalities. There are certain jazz tonalities, the modes are tonalities, but for now we're just going to focus on minor and major. Tonality is sort of an amorphous concept, but if I had to describe it, it's kind of like the character of a certain sound. I mentioned that major sounds happy and minor sounds sad. Those are words that describe the tonality. An important quirk of music is that unless a tonality is specified, we assume it to be major. That's why I always referred to E minor as E minor, but when I just said E, we assume it to be E major. This was a rule that was made up by a bunch of guitar gods back when the earth was new. But it's important for you to know, because as we progress, and as you progress on your guitar playing journey, you might hear people say something like, play a G chord. It's important for you to understand that they're talking about a G major chord. Or if they say we're in the key of F, we assume that to be F major unless they otherwise specify that it's F minor or something. Anyway, moving on. Our next chord is A minor, which is really easy if you already know E major because you just take your whole shape here and move it up one set of strings. So see this? I'm here at E major, I just move this whole shape up. And it's back to being a sad sounding minor chord. So for A minor, your first finger is on the first fret of the B string. Your second finger is on the second fret of the D string. And your third finger is on the second fret of the G string. And you strum not all six strings, you actually exclude the low E, so it's only the top five. Now, A major is very similar. You'll see if you look at the chord chart that all we're doing is taking this finger that's on the first fret of the B string and we're just moving this note up to the second fret. But to do that, we have to change our fingering entirely. 
we take our first finger and it goes on the second fret of the D string. Our second finger goes on the second fret of the G string. And our third finger goes on the second fret of the B string. And again, we avoid the low E string and only play the top five strings. Now I told you guys that I wasn't gonna dumb any of this down, so I do wanna show you a trick that I learned from high level guitar players for playing the A major chord. Instead of playing this and having your fingers all scrunched up, a trick is to take just your first finger and play A major like this. So your first finger is across the second fret on the D, G, and B strings. What you're doing is you're actually collapsing that first knuckle. For almost all the chords, you wanna be up on the tips of your fingers. That way you get a nice clean sound. But for this one, you do wanna collapse that knuckle to hit all those strings. Now the hard part about this is getting that high E string to ring out. So if you're a beginner, maybe don't worry about this so much. Make sure you definitely got this version of A major down. But if you're looking for a challenge that can maybe help you get faster at switching your chords, this is a good version of A major to try. Okay, our next chord is called G. We're back to strumming all six strings here. We're taking our first finger and putting it on the second fret of the A string. Our second finger is going on the third fret of the E string. And our third finger is going on the third fret of the high E string. So here's G. Now again, I do want to show you guys a, uh, a voicing of G that I play pretty often. And it's just exactly the same, only instead of having my third finger on the high E string here, I move it over to the third fret on the B string. And I add my pinky, my fourth finger here, to be the third fret on the high E string. Listen to the difference. There's this, which is the traditional way, and here's the way that I do it. To me, it rings out a little bit more, but again, make sure that you got the basic version of G mastered. The next chord we're learning is called C, and we're back to strumming only the top five strings, so make sure to exclude the low E string. Take your first finger and put it on the first fret of the B string. Take your second finger and put it on the second fret of the D string. And take your third finger and put it on the third fret of the A string. And remember, exclude that low E string. And for the final chord, we're gonna to learn to play D major. Now this chord is different because you're excluding both the low E and the A string. You're only playing the top four strings. What you do is you take your first finger and it goes on the second fret of the G string. Your second finger goes on the second fret of the high E string. And your third finger hits the third fret of the B string. And like I said, you hit from the D string down. There you go, there's the seven chords. All right, so I promised you guys I would show you a couple of tricks to avoid the lower strings when you're playing like A chords or like the C chord or the D chord where you got to avoid lower strings. So the first thing you can do, which is also the hardest, is literally just try. Like, not a lot of advice here. Just try to avoid them. When you're strumming, just look and try to not hit those strings with your right hand. This is definitely important and it will help you and you should practice it, but it's so amorphous that I don't really count it as a technique for helping you avoid lower strings. When it comes to actual techniques or things to practice to avoid hitting lower strings, there's basically like three big tips I can give you. I'm gonna list them in order of effectiveness. So the first one, which is least effective, is to recognize that on your up strums, I'm gonna use a C chord here. Uh, I'd be avoiding the low E string. On your up strums, it's easy to just pull your hand away. Just hit the first couple of strings, the, the highest couple of strings, and pull your hand away. On up strums, it's easier to kind of just pull your hand away than it is to avoid the low strings on a down strum. You get it. Now I say this is the least effective because obviously it doesn't work for down strums at all, but it can help, so I wanted to mention it. 
The second thing you can do, and this is definitely the nerdiest, but I've found that like me, my audience sometimes thinks like a robot, so I wanted to mention this. Now I've made some props to uh, help me visualize this for you. I imagine that when I'm strumming, if I were to stare down the guitar neck kind of like this, there'd be a radius right here across the sound hole. And let's assume my plane of strumming is always straight, so if my hand is moving up and down, that's a flat plane. I've got this flat piece of paper to represent my flat strumming plane. The idea is that when I'm strumming, this plane is always tangent to the radius. So it touches one point of the radius and it remains flat. And that normally, it's like this. It's just straight up and down, not complex at all. But I imagine that when I'm strumming, instead of the plane being flat here, it sort of angles like this. So my hand is still moving in a flat plane, but that flat plane rotates on this radius so that you might say, my hand kind of flares out a little bit. So if I were to be overly dramatic about what it looks like when I'm strumming like that, normally we would say that my hand is moving in a flat plane here, just up and down. But when I'm trying to avoid the low strings, and I'm again, I'm really exaggerating this movement, my hand is going in and then kind of coming out. See how this is flat to the body, but this isn't? Now I want to make it clear that I only ever really think about that. Obviously if I were to literally be moving my hand into the guitar, I'd be punching my guitar, and my pick would dig way too far into the strings and the high strings. But if I kind of think about that, if I orient my mind towards that, it makes it easier to avoid the low strings. Maybe that was super dorky and it doesn't help you at all, but it helps me so I wanted to mention it. Now the final and most effective way to help avoid the low strings when you're strumming a chord that doesn't involve all six strings is actually a left hand technique. Let's take A minor for example. Here we go. What I'll do is I'll look and see if I have a spare finger, including my thumb. And in this case, I have exactly that. I have my thumb available. It's not doing anything. So what I'll do is I'll reach my thumb around and I'll use this fleshy sort of pad of my thumb here. And I'll use that part of my thumb, not to fret the low E string, but just to mute it. Listen to this. It's totally dead, but when I strum a chord, you don't hear anything but the strings that are meant to ring out. Now if I'm playing C, for example, I can do the same thing. Um, I can use my thumb. Or, you know, I told you guys to look for spare fingers that aren't being used. In this case, I am using my third finger to hit this C note, this third fret up here on the A string. But I can also use my third finger to kind of fret the A string in a way that the fleshy tip of my finger also kind of hits the low E string, again, muting it. So when I hit C, it rings out nice and clearly. That left hand muting technique is really effective, especially on chords that only require five strings. Now on D, where you're only playing four strings, honestly, that's just hard to play. That's where I was telling you before that you might have to push yourself and you might just have to try to avoid it. This is gonna be one of the harder aspects of learning some of these open chords. So focus on that and if it were me personally, I'd really focus on the left hand muting technique. Now really quick, I wanna talk about the theory behind how we build chords. We're not gonna go into a lot of depth here, but I do wanna touch on it briefly because I believe that music theory is important when it comes to making yourself a well-rounded musician. So the idea behind these basic major and minor chords is that they're made up of what's called triads. And the, you know, the root of that word tri means three, and triads are made up of three notes. These three notes are always the first, third, and fifth scale degrees. Now, what does that mean? So if we take, for example, let's talk about a G major chord here. That relates to a G major scale. So if I were to play a G major scale, it would sound like this. The notes in the G major chord are the first note in the G major scale. Here is G. And then the next note would be the third note. So let's just count it. One, two, three. This note's called B. And then the next note would be the fifth note. So let's count it again. One, two, three, four, five. This note's called D. So this chord only has those notes, G, B, and D in it. And you might say, well, the open G chord has six strings. There's six notes being played in that chord. So how is it only made up of three notes? The answer is that a lot of the notes are repeated. So for example, this note here on the low E string, that's G, that's in the chord. The note on the A string is a B, right? That's in the chord. 
the open D string is in this chord. So there's our triad, but we still have three more notes to go. Now, what are they? The next note would be the open G string, which is the first scale degree, like we talked about. And then the open B string is in this chord again. And that's the third, which we talked about. And then here on the high E string is G again. So you can see that the G chord is still made up of those notes. It just gets repeated when it's an open chord like that. And you could apply this to any chord. Let's take C really quickly as an example. If we play the C major scale, we got the first note here, the first note here, and the fifth note here. All of those notes are in the chord, but you can see, you know, like for example, there's two C's, there's one here and one here. Some of these notes are repeated to make the open chord voicing on guitar work. Anyway, if you don't completely understand this right now, don't worry about it. We'll get more into music theory later, but for those of you who are ready for it, I wanted to mention it. Now, I want to address the fact that throughout this video, I've been saying that these are the seven essential chords. I will defend this opinion with my life. If you're a beginner, trust me, bro. If you're not a beginner, E, E minor, A minor, and A are the foundation for fifth and sixth string bar chords and G, C, and D are essential to understanding the cage system later on. What I'm saying is that my opinion is objectively correct, and anybody who disagrees is invited to hate me personally. Now, I always want to deliver on my clickbait. At the beginning, I said that you can probably play 90% of the songs you want to play with the chords in this video. Now, that's probably true. Like I said, these are the most commonly used chords. Right off the top of my head, I can think of a couple of great songs. I'm not entirely sure how copyright on YouTube works just quite yet, so I don't want to say the straight up names of these songs, but there is my favorite Tom Petty song of all time. There's that really popular Bob Dylan song. There's that great Nine Inch Nail song that Johnny Cash covered. There's that fantastic ACDC song. My point is there's a ton of these. There's a great video by a band called Axis of Awesome where they do a compilation of nothing but four chord songs. And you see how common these chords really are. I think even Ed Sheeran did a bit about four chord songs on a talk show. So seriously, if you look into it, you'll realize that the seven chords that I showed you in this video have opened up literally thousands of songs for you. But now that you know how to play these chords, you might realize that it's hard to switch between them really quickly, especially if you're trying to play songs. Luckily, your guitar mom has a video for that. Thank you for watching.